Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about defragmenting your Applied Energistics ME storage network. On your primary network, you might have several ME disk drives full of disks, and as you bring items in from your quarries and mining operations, and then send those items back out um, for you know your automatic crafting or or your general use, um, the disk can become fragmented where multiple items are spread across the disk, and you're not taking full advantage of all the space on there. Uh, in some cases, like this disk right here, there's enough space to add more of the items that are already contained on it, but not enough space for a new item. So what we want to do is we want to ensure that we are writing as much information as possible onto each of these disks so that we have the maximum amount available for new items coming into the network. The way we're going to solve this problem is using a second network. <coughs> on our first network here, we've got our ME drive, a controller, and two of these MEIO ports. Um, We'll go over why we're using two of those in just a moment, but first, let's take a look at the second network here. Now, I've cabled this network in red, and that's not explicitly necessary. It's just so you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, on this network, we've got an import bus. We've got an export bus set to send out our 1K storage units. And we've got this storage bus here. Uh, and this export bus and storage bus are wired up behind a piece of dark cable. We've also got an ME chest two import buses and two storage buses attached to these I.O. ports. So what we're going to try and do here is use this import bus to pull all the disks out of this drive, send all the empty ones to this chest, send all the full ones to these I.O. ports, and then push everything back into this chest. Empty ones first and then right to the full, right from the full ones and then bring them back in once they become empty so that other disks can write to them. So the way we're going to do this is by using priorities. So we've assigned a priority of 2 to our chest, and we've got priority of 1 on each of, these, each of these storage buses over here. And we've got a priority of 3 on this storage bus here. So when this is off, our chest is our highest priority. So what will happen is all this will try to come into the chest, but just to prevent recursion, I think, you cannot put an ME drive with information on it into an ME chest. So only the empty items will come into this chest, and all of our full items will come into these I.O. ports over here. Once we've got that taken care of, we'll turn off our export and turn on our storage bus and our import bus. The import bus will immediately move all of the empty drives that we have back into this disk drive, and the storage bus will get us ready to move the rest of the drives in here as they get imported back into the system. Since it's the highest priority, this will be the new target instead of the chest, which can also accept the, accept the empty disks. So let's go ahead and give this a try and just see what happens. All right, there go all of our disks. And we would expect to see our empty disks appear back here. There they are. And then any of our disks with information should appear in these I.O. ports. All right. There they are. And this is the reason why I have two I.O. ports. Um, there are only six slots available inside the I.O. port, and our disk drive holds ten disks. So if you've got information written on more than six of your disks, they won't all fit. Um, so if that happens, you won't be able to get any of the disks that are after them either because the second network will have no place to put them. So if your blank disks are at the bottom, which is usually the case, you need to make sure that you get all of these out so that you get the blank disks into your other network and start them at the top. Uh, you don't, of course, have to do that. Uh, you can just begin writing back to them immediately while they're in place. Uh, but I, I just prefer to have the blank disks at the top and be written to uh, so we can kind of see them come down. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that if you are using m multiple I.O. ports, you need to make sure that you have multiple blank disks available. And the reason for that is that they're going to be writing at the exact same time. So this full disk here is going to be trying to empty itself at the same time as this disk. If we don't have enough space for both of those disks to clear out, uh, then neither of them will clear out, and they'll be stuck here uh, in the I.O. ports, unable to travel back into our disk drive until, the, until one of them has been cleared. So let's go ahead and populate our blank disks into our drive here. There we are. There's our two blank disks matching our two I.O. ports. And let's go ahead and start emptying out our I.O. ports and see what happens. 
Okay, and as you can see, the blank disks are coming in, and then items are being written to them. And let's take a look and see how our numbers are now. Okay, so those are completely full now. We've opened up quite a bit of contiguous space on this disk, and now we actually have an additional blank disk. So we now have three blank disks, whereas we had two before, because we've consolidated our items down onto these other disks. Now, there are, of course, other reasons that a person might want to do this. Um, for example, perhaps you formatted a disk, and you want to move all of your items onto that disk. And you can use this ME preformatter here, and just tell it what kind of items you want on there and give it a name. I probably misspelled that. A-P-A-T-I-T-E. Nope, that's good. Alright, so now we've got a formatted disk. And so if we were to do, and formatted disks can uh, fit into your MHS as long as they don't have items on them. So if we were want to move all of our appetite onto that disk, at least as much as will fit, and get it off of these other disks, we could simply remove one of these blank disks that are the replacement for it. Turn this back off. Go ahead and start emptying out here. Alright, and let's give it a shot. And so we should have our formatted disk in here, but we don't. So why don't we have our formatted disk in there? Oh, well, we don't have it in there because this export bus will not export it. Well, that's okay. We will just put it back in by hand for now. Uh, we do want to make sure, though, uh, that it is the first disk in here. Uh, if not, then the appetite might write on to our other disks. So let's go ahead and get that in there. Okay, and you can see it's orange because it is at the maximum number of items it can hold. Uh, it can only hold appetite. Okay, let's get that back on there and go ahead and start exporting. Okay, and it is now filled up with appetite, so any additional appetite we get uh, will write on to these other disks. So just be aware that um, even though it will hold as much as it possibly can of the appetite, uh, it is still entirely possible that other disks will get some on it if you fill your disk up. Alright, so there's all of our appetite there. And of course there is another reason that you might want to do this. Um, perhaps you've added on some kind of storage unit to your network <coughs> and you want to uh, move any relevant items onto that other storage. So back here we've got a DSU uh, and we've already set it to take iron. And let's go and connect it up to our primary network and now we want to try and get all of the iron off of our disks and onto this DSU here. So again we're going to pull our disks out. Alright. And put any blank ones we have back in. And go ahead and run everything through. And so let's take a look and see what happened here. Okay, so we got all of our iron out. Now, if you're going to do this, you want to make sure that your DSU or whatever other storage unit you have on there has a higher priority than your disk drive. Uh, if it doesn't, the items will attempt to write back to the disk drive first. Uh, if there is already iron on one of the disks in the disk drive. Uh, so remember that Applied Energistics, it does do grouping before priority. So if you were not to empty this completely, uh, or if you had iron somewhere else in your system, uh, and it had a higher priority than the new device that you added, uh, it would go there instead. So... Uh, but if it's in both places, it should go to the one with the highest priority, and we can just make sure of that by um, changing the priority on our storage bus on that DSU. So this has gone on a little bit longer than I intended. Um, I hope this is helpful to you, and have a great day.